most people wouldn't ever think of wanting an FBI file. Certainly, the association is it's a negative thing. But if you're a political agitator, it's a stroke to the eagle to know the government it has a file on you. So I wanted an FBI file. How did I get one? I got one by following spiritual laws, but I didn't know it at the time. During my college days, I was actively involved in radical politics. So I thought I was a leader, I would have an FBI file. I wrote to the FBI, they did some checking, no file. I even appealed it, no file. One of my friends said, you would think they watched the campuses. And that's what I thought. I thought I was a well-known person at UW-Stevens Point, so I would have a file. But I guess it didn't work that way. It worked because, like I said, I followed spiritual laws, but I didn't know it. This year, I've been really focusing on some words of Wayne Dyer. Wayne Dyer said, don't will, be willing, the universe resists demands. He got this insight because one day he was meditating and he thought he would use his power of his mind to get these buds to fall off the tree. No matter how hard he tried, they wouldn't fall off. But then he decided to let go and they fell into him. Reflecting on my whole life, I've seen the best things I've gotten in life were when I let go. It seems so counterintuitive. But that's the way it worked. And that's what happened when I got an FBI file. I tried so hard to get it, but I didn't get it. After graduate school, I tried really hard to find a job and it just wasn't working. So I went to live with my mom for a little while in lacrosse. My whole effort was trying to get a job. So that was, was where I was focused on. One day out of the blue, I got a knock on the door and there came an FBI agent, Andrew John was his name. He said he wanted to ask me, he wanted to pick my mind about Shaq. I was, well, Shaq, what's Shaq, what's Shaq? I couldn't recall what Shaq was. And plus, it really bothered me. I'm a person who's easily startled. So I just told him, I didn't want to say anything now. I would maybe talk to him later. And I shut the door <laughs> pretty much in his face. And then he said, Andrew, 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 FBI people aren't usually deterred. So that may get your everyday salesman to turn away, but not the FBI. Fortunately, I did find a job soon enough. And then I moved to Oakdale. The FBI came back to visit my mom. My mom sat down and talked with him. Basically told him, yeah, he has strong views and he does things in an intense way, but he's not going to break the law. Incidentally, they were investigating Shaq. And after the FBI agent came, I looked at the website, Google, and then I found out Shaq was Stop Huntington Animal Cruelty. And then I go, and then I recall, oh yeah, I was on the mailing list once, but that was it. I got some of their periodicals. It didn't really do much for me. I just read them. I was in animal rights, so what's the big deal? Afterwards, they talked with my mom, and she gave them information. They apparently Shaq was doing some really bad things. I knew from their newsletter they were pretty extreme, but I wasn't actively involved in that. So, and I didn't know anything either, so I thought, okay, whatever. Soon after they visited my mom, they came after me in Oakdale. I was going to the post office, and one of the agents from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Calvin Meyer came up to me and he said he needed to talk with me. I talked with him. The good thing is I didn't know anything so I couldn't rat on anybody. 
I was really not very fond of Shaq for putting me in that predicament, but I also didn't want to rat on them. They offered me the opportunity to infiltrate. The thing is, usually when they offer that to people, they have committed some crime and they can get a lighter sentence or get off completely. But as they said from the get-go, I wasn't wanted for a crime, just for information. So why would I want to infiltrate I asked, I said, if you want to infiltrate Al-Qaeda, hey, I'll do that. But he wasn't open to that. Basically, he got new information. He threw out these names that I never heard of. And I said I never went out to East to do anything with Shaq, which is where they're located. Then he told me that he w they probably would be speaking to me any further if I recall correctly. And then after that I realized, hey, 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 I got an FBI file. So I wrote away. The information came back. I got a number of pages from the FBI file. A lot of it was pretty repetitive. They did a Google search on me and that's interesting to find their high profile investigation Techniques is a Google search, something I could do myself. They looked at Autonomy Party website. They saw that back then there was planks about animal rights, but they concluded, they said there was nothing to do with illegal. They even had to mention that I am an ultra marathon runner on the FBI file, and they saw I had created Autonomy Party and Federation without television. But they didn't see any link to Shaq. And they also pointed out that nothing on the autonomy party suggested breaking the law in advancement of animal rights. I don't think you need to break the law to be radical. I'm not saying I never broke the law. I did. Most people have broken the law. I would. There's no such thing as a law-abiding citizen. Everyone has broken some law, even if they act like they're law-abiding. Even the most arch patriots break the law. But I've broken the law before for activist reasons, but nowadays I've grown wiser. I don't think you have to do that. I'm not saying it's never justified, just rarely justified. It better be damn good if you're going to break the law. In one of my philosophy classes, we talked about the justifications for civil disobedience and the one professor suggested that maybe the good justification is if it has to be, you have to do it in the open. Like Martin Luther King Jr. did it in the open. But Shaq people do it with masks on, so I think that's pretty sketchy. I don't like Shaq. I'm not going to rat on them. I'm not going to infiltrate them. But fuck them for getting them me in that predicament. Or should I say thank you Forgive me an FBI file. I have put down some notes and I once posted that to LiveJournal, some of the tidbits of my FBI file. I'm happy to say I got one. And perhaps the greatest moral of this story is follow the spiritual laws. What Wayne Dyer said is so true. It's like the saying, love comes when you're not looking. Not only love, but other things. Things come when you're not looking. You can't transmit and receive at the same time. It's like a radio. If you always transmit, there's no other party that can get on the airwaves. I got an FBI file. Hopefully, if I do things right, I'm going to have another one. But... I, I don't want to break the law if I don't have to, and I don't think you have to in most circumstances. So who knows? I might get an FBI file. I might not. But, I mean, more added to my FBI file. But right now, I'm glad to say I got one. It was something I longed for. I got it by inadvertently following the spiritual laws, and I hope to apply those spiritual laws more, directive, more directly and consciously in the future.